Let's start the video with some exciting examples to understand the weird world of fourth dimension. Suppose a three-dimensional being enters into the world of two-dimensional beings. Let's call the two-dimensional beings flatlanders. In a two-dimensional world, all the beings and their objects are flat, having only length and breadth. There is nothing like above or below for them. The 3D being would seem like a superhuman to the flatlanders. Now suppose that a person from the third dimension wants to steal an object placed inside the safe of a flatlander. Let me remind you that the safe of the flatlander would also be flat. The boundaries of the safe are enough for the flatlanders to keep their flat objects secure, as they cannot take out objects from the flat safe simply by moving it from above or below their 2D plane. But a 3D being can easily take out the object kept in the flat safe through the third dimension, simply by picking it up. Just like we can pick any object placed inside a ring. But this extremely simple task of 3D being of picking up the object is enough to blow the mind of the 2D being. He would have no idea how someone can steal the object from the safe without opening or breaking the walls of the safe. Not only this, if the third dimensional being is present below or above the flatland of the two-dimensional being, the flatlander cannot even see the 3D being, because they can only see things lying in the plane of their flatland. In the same way, a four-dimensional being can easily take out objects kept inside a three-dimensional closed box without opening or breaking it. He can remove the object through the fourth dimension, and a 3D being like us would wonder where the object has gone. Actually one extra dimension. The fourth dimension is available to the 4D being to interact with the object. Beings of third dimensions cannot see or perceive that fourth dimension. For 3D humans like us, that object would simply seem to disappear from the box. As we know that two-dimensional structures like a square or circle cannot bound 3D beings like us. We would easily escape from the third dimension that is perpendicular to the plane of these 2D shapes. In the same way, fourth dimensional beings cannot be bounded by three dimensional structures like closed box or cage. They would escape through the fourth dimension without opening or breaking the box. So, we 3D humans cannot imprison the four dimensional beings. Now, we will visualize the fourth dimension using the method of cross section of objects. If a three dimensional object passes through the two dimensional plane, the beings living in the second dimension would only see the cross section of the 3D object cut by that 2D plane. Let's try to visualize this with the help of an interesting example. Suppose an apple, which is a 3D object, enters into the world of two-dimensional beings. The flatlanders would not be able to see the apple until it touches their flat land, as it is not possible for them to see anything that is not present in their plane. But when the apple just touches the 2D plane, it appears as a dot to the flatlanders. As the apple passes through the 2D surface of the flatlanders, the apple will appear as a growing circle. The circle appears to grow until it reaches the diameter of the apple. When the apple keeps moving perpendicular to the plane, the circle will appear smaller and smaller, then again a point, and finally, when it leaves the flatland, it will disappear from the eyes of the flatlanders. But let me tell you that two-dimensional beings would have one-dimensional retina in their eyes, so they would not see the apple as a growing circle. Actually, one-dimensional projection of the circle would be projected on their one-dimensional retina. If you didn't get this concept of retina, let me explain how we see our three-dimensional world with our eyes. We are three-dimensional beings and we have two-dimensional retina. On this two-dimensional retina, 2D images of 3D objects are formed. This is actually the two-dimensional projection of the 3D objects. But our brain is smart enough to create 
a 3D model of the object from this 2D projection on our two-dimensional retina. The brain gathers two-dimensional information like lightning, shadow gradient and perspective from our eyes. Then after processing it, the brain creates an image with depth. Therefore, we cannot see 3D objects in their entirety as we only get 2D projection of the 3D objects on our two-dimensional retina. For example, if there is an opaque closed box, we cannot see what's inside it. It is also not possible for 3D beings like us to see all the surfaces of the box simultaneously. To see the box in its entirety, we need to see it from different angles separately. But we can see a two-dimensional object in its entirety because of our 2D retina. For example, we can see a rectangle in its entirety, its all sides and also its complete inner area at the same time. In the same way, a four-dimensional being would be able to see a three-dimensional object in its entirety. It would be possible for him because of his 3D retina. The entire 3D projection of the 3D object would be formed on their 3D retina. So, a being of fourth dimension would be able to see all the surfaces of the solid objects simultaneously. He would easily see what's present inside a closed box or what's happening on the other side of the wall. It would be possible for him to see all the internal organs of your body and many other incredible things like this. But the four-dimensional beings would not be able to see the four-dimensional objects in its entirety as they don't have 4D retina. So, only 3D projection of the 4D object would be formed on their 3D retina. Friends, there is one more way that can be used to visualize the four-dimensional world. This method is called the bounding volumes. As we know that two-dimensional objects are bounded by one-dimensional boundaries. For example, a two-dimensional square is bounded by one-dimensional edges. In the same way, three-dimensional objects are bounded by two-dimensional surfaces. For example, a three-dimensional cube is bounded by two-dimensional square faces. So, by applying the dimensional analogy, we may infer that a four-dimensional object is bounded by three-dimensional volumes. It has also been proved by mathematics that a four-dimensional structure known as the tesseract is bounded by three-dimensional cubes. Actually, tesseract is the four-dimensional analog of the cube which is also called as the hypercube or the 4D cube. A tesseract can be drawn by drawing two 3D cubes, one encompassing the other on a two-dimensional plane. We now connect the respective eight vertices of both the cubes. Actually, these eight lines that connect the vertices of both the cubes represent a single direction in the fourth dimension that we cannot see. Guys, we have already seen many superpowers of a four-dimensional being related to space. But now, I will end the video after discussing how the 4D being can control time. The four-dimensional being would be able to move freely in time dimension, in the past or in future. That being would also be able to go back in time and change his decisions and start a new timeline. But let me tell you that parallel universes do not exist in the fourth dimension. Because of this, he would be able to have only single timeline. Therefore, this old timeline will end and a new timeline will start based on his changed decision. So friends, this was all about the fourth dimension. If you found the video interesting and informative, then please like and share it. And for more such videos, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Engineering Made Easy. Thanks for watching.